Well, hello everyone! Welcome back to Dual Destinies. Previously, we finished cross-examining Miriam Scuttlebutt. Thank goodness for that, it's over. For now. <laughs> uh, at any rate, we managed to prove that, hey, there's this mysterious glowing liquid, a uh, fluorescent liquid, that was used to paint the costume in the mock trial. So, why was that same paint all over Robin Newman's hands? And to that end, we've called him to the stand to cross-examine him now. Apparently, he's the one who donned the costume to lead Miriam out on a wild goose chase, which is how she discovered the body. So there's many questions for Robin, and to that end, let's continue. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? I'm Robin Newman! I want to become a great artist! I practice day and night, yeah! So why are you in a law school? No, that's not it! Art's gotta be sincere, man! If... If that's not sincere, I don't know, want to know what is. Oh my god. So, for occupation, should we put down budding artist? No! Themis Legal Academy, Senior Prosecutor Course! Alright, which is it then? I mean, yeah, I guess you could be a prosecutor and artist if you go over time, I, I guess. This brace is proof of my masculinity. I've been training to be a prosecutor for 18 years. Eight? You're 18 years old. Uh huh. I assume you'll be cleaning up the pottery you smashed before you leave today. Ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, uh. <laughs> Calm down. Hmm. It seems the witness has finally settled down. I guess nothing phases the judge after all these years. You may proceed with your testimony, Mr. Newman. Specifically, the court wishes to hear why you had fluorescent paint on your hand. I went to see Juniper in her dressing room, but she wasn't there. When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa! The mannequin it was on, it was about to fall on me. I got that paint on me when I caught it. But I never put it on, that's just stupid! Hold it! Your Honor, I recommend a short therapy session for the witness. Yes, please. Well, Mr. Newman does seem particularly agitated, but... Ah! Yarg! Ah, no! Not again. What's his problem? I sensed it the moment Robin took the stand. The discord in his heart. So you think he might be hiding something? Probably. You ready, Mr. Newman? Let's see what the Mood Matrix can do for you. Well, all right. I went to see Juniper in her waiting room. Perfectly neutral statement. But she wasn't there. Yes, you were very surprised by that. That makes sense. When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa! Yeah, I mean, I am sure it was a secret, secret prop. And you like kind of spoiled the story. The happiness, it makes sense. The mannequin it was on, it was about to fall over. No distress, all right. But, surprise, sure, that's believable. I got the paint on me when I caught it. Huh. I never put it on, that's just stupid. Okay. 
angry at the accusation. That makes sense. Uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, let's take this from the top. Alright, neutral statement. Makes sense. She wasn't there. Yes, surprise. That makes sense. When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa. Yes, happiness and surprise. That makes sense a whole lot. The mannequin it was on is about to fall over. Just surprise, no sadness, no distress. Okay, so... You were less surprised when there was paint on your hands, because... You should have been upset that your hands were suddenly coated in paint, but... A minor amount of surprise is a bit suspect. Right, so... Rather than focus on what isn't there, I want to focus on what is there. I want to say that being sad and distressed makes sense for it about to fall over, but your lack of surprise at there being paint on the costume is suspicious to me, so let's try this. Got it. Mr. Newman, this emotion is inconsistent with your testimony, damn it. What are you talking about? It's not true! My only emotion is testosterone-fueled stubbornness! Yikes! I wouldn't really call that an emotion. Wonder where I went wrong. Well, better try that again. Bring it on! A million times or a billion! I don't care! Alright, well let's try plan B. No distress? Alright. Uh, both my best ideas are not not working. Alright. Uh, cripes. Alright, alright. Uh, why, why do I struggle with this stuff so much? I don't get it. Maybe we can just explore why he feels angry at this accusation? I am really glad there's no penalty here. Okay. You got the painting on you. We tried to looking at surprise here, but what if there's an oddness and lack of distress at having paint on you? Oh, I'm gonna feel like such an idiot when I find out what the hell the game wants from me here. Uh, what the hell? Maybe, maybe it's odd that he was surprised she wasn't there? I, I don't know, what do you expect? I mean, of course she'd be there. This, it was her waiting room. It, she was supposed to, but, oh. Yeah, of course. I I'm glad that's not it. I'm glad that's not it. Alright. I went to see Juniper in her waiting room, but she wasn't there. When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa. Why did it make you happy? What? There better be a good explanation for this. When you mentioned the stage costume, I sensed a sudden powerful feeling of joy. Would you like, would you care to explain, Mr. Newman? Oh, wait, what? Why would a frilly scarf-like thing, a uh, scarf thing and a lawn skirt make me feel like that? I don't know, but you seem awfully interested in that costume for some reason. You didn't happen to put it on, did you? Uh... Uh... uh what? Huh? 
like I'd be into that kind of thing. I'm a dude. I'm into braces. Okay, you know what? I wasn't going to say anything when I first met Robin Newman, but I was like... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Those those eye eyelashes... I mean... I I nearly said... Are we, uh, wait, so he's a, he's a guy, right? You sure? All right. I, my, like, my first thought was that this was a woman. Is, um, but now Newman's going all over on, like, uh, on and on about testosterone and dudeness and manliness. I'm like, is she, is she hiding her gender? Is she, like, disguising herself as a man, or... Actually, honestly, maybe they're actually going for some trans identity plotline here? Could be either, I don't know. But I'm very curious to see what's about to happen. Uh, I'm a dude, and I'm into braces! You don't think Robin's actually got a thing for Juniper's outfit, do you? Oh, come on, isn't it obvious? You're enjoying this a bit too much, Athena. No way, man! The mannequin came falling toward me, so I stuck up my hands to stop it. End of story. That's a new piece of information. Time to run an update. Yeah, the, I, I paid attention to how Robin just caught it in that diagram. That is most certainly not how your thumbs would catch it. No, sir. It, it's the... Uh, Robin's arms would have to be crossed. Hmm. Huh. Even after that update, something just doesn't feel right here. Do I have anything that could prove his statement contradicts what really happened? Yeah. Take that! You said the mannequin came falling toward you, so you stuck your hands out to stop it. If so, then the fingers of your hands would have been pointing outward like this. But that's not what the handprints show. In fact, this looks more like your thumbs and the base of your palms. Why in the world would I leave such weird handprints? You know why. You left them when you went to adjust the scarf after putting it on. Just like the model in this drawing. Oh yeah. On the right there. I didn't even pay attention to that pose. I did not think that would be relevant. Whoa! Why don't you just admit it, Mr. Newman? You did put the stage costume on, didn't you? And you really do like Miss Woods' clothes, don't you? Fine. I admit to putting the costume on. But... I don't like girly clothes, man! Only 10%?! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> yes, new information to plug in. Time for another update. Alright, so, frankly speaking, the name Newman is just about the funniest name you could pick for a character whose plotline is going down like this. <laughs> so, new, new testimony. I snuck in knowing the costume was in there. Oh. Really? My heart was pounding even though I'm a guy. Why would this distress you? Then I saw it. It was even more amazing than I had imagined. I was like, whoa, I'm a guy, but I got all excited. Oh, here's the weird distress. It's true, I did put on girly clothes. Why does this distress you? <laughs> it was strictly for artistic purposes. Huh. Alright, you got all excited, you say, but no, this is not all excited. 
There, another emotion that doesn't fit. So what? You're really starting to get on my nerves, man. Mr. Newman, you got excited when you put the costume on, but you also felt sad. Who cares if I felt sad? It's no big deal. Okay, Mr. Newman, out with it. Why did you feel sad? You're hiding something, aren't you? Oh, no! You're not fooling anyone anymore. Now tell us why you were sad. Okay, fine! You know, when I was like five years old, I was really upset that I was not allowed to wear high heels or skirts. That, that, those feelings didn't last too long. If you're gonna be that way, I'll tell you. The reason I felt sad is, is, is... No matter how much I dress up, I'll never be as pretty as Juniper! Well, no offense, but his habit of shouting at the top of his lungs doesn't exactly help. No, that's not it! I totally owned those girly clothes. I should have been totally pretty. But, but, there's something that keeps getting in my way. Wow, that's a whole lot of anger and raw emotion right there. His heart is crying out in pain. His emotions are out of control. Out of control emotions? We saw those during the Nine Tails Veil vale incident. So all we have to do is find the source of his uncontrollable anger, right? Right, help me look for a conflict between his statements and the images we see. If we can find that we can wrestle him away from whatever's tormenting him... Um... Oh, if we can find that, we can wrestle him away. Alright. Mr. Newman said that there's something getting in the way of him being pretty. Something that doesn't go with girly clothes. But what could it be? Fine, I'll testify, man! 5%? What? <laughs> what? Alright. Out of control anger. I snuck in knowing the costume was in there. My heart was pounding even though I'm a guy. It's true I felt a powerful feeling when I saw that lawn frilly scarf. I admit it, I wore girly clothes. I felt like a diva when I pulled the hood over my head. Diva. No, I, I was thinking of D. Vasquez. That's not the name of, uh... I, yeah, I'm thinking of Lemire. I swear, the costume looks so much like Lemire. At least what I remember Lemire looking like. It felt so right, I was totally dressed up like a girl. Alright. If it felt right, why were you angry? Oh, what's causing anger? Brace? Newman? The costume. Huh. Well... You know what? It's true, I felt a powerful feeling when I saw that long frilly scarf. You know what? This is neither frilly or a scarf. I think that's wrong. The source of Mr. Newman's anger is this. Nope, you're way off, way off! Eek, no good, huh? I'm trying to listen carefully, but all the shouting, it's... We'd better finish this off quick before you rupture an eardrum. No worries, I'm gonna nail it next time. I hope so. It's not a scarf! That's not a scarf, and it's not frilly either. Huh.
Okay, totally dressed up as a girl? It Wait, oh crap. So we're looking for the source of this anger. Right, the conflict in his testimony will most likely arise from his emotional repression. Let's compare the images to his testimony. We might find the problem that way. Right, so as I was saying... The language Robin's using here, it felt so right, I was totally dressed up like a girl. I know that's not really how he's using totally, but... You're not totally dressed up like a girl, you have this weird brace on, didn't that get in the way? Got it. Aha! Mr. Newman, you feel a great deal of anger toward your brace, don't you? Is that what you feel is holding you back from being as pretty as you think you should be? Huh? Oh, what? Mr. Newman, the truth is you really want to take that brace off, don't you? No way, man. This is a symbol of masculinity. I could never take it off. Is it that you can't take it off or that you don't want to take it off? Oh man, I should have kept my big mouth shut. This is really weird. He exhibits intense anger towards his brace, which he calls a symbol of masculinity. But he can't take it off, not even when he's trying to look pretty. Could be at the root of his complicated relationship with his brace. You know, I don't... At this point, I don't think it's a... Like an exercise thing. I think it's a medical thing. I have a feeling we're on the verge of uncovering an earth-shattering secret. Athena, you okay? It seems Robin is still hiding a secret. A big one. Bigger than the fact that he's secretly jealous of Juniper's looks? Yes, at least I think so. No, it can't be. I just thought of something, but it's totally insane. Mr. Newman? What? I'm on to your little secret. And if I'm correct, it's not very little at all. It's huge. This sounds completely insane, but it's the only possibility left. Uh... Uh, none of these are insane. Well, except for you hate girls. Misogyny is not cool. Um, you're, you're, you're a girl? Yeah, maybe you are a girl from the start. But you're... Wh wh why? Uh... Okay, this would make the biggest splash in the water, so to speak, so let's choose this. Mr. Newman, or should I say Miss Newman, you are and always have been a girl. What? Have you lost the plot, Athena? No, I'm completely serious. I don't have any direct evidence. But that's what Robin's heart is shouting out loud and clear. I still think you've totally lost it. I mean, Robin reeks of testosterone. How could he possibly be a she? I, for one, have never seen a girl who shouts like a maniac all the time. You sure about that? I can think of at least three. Oh, 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 oh. I've seen plenty of witnesses in my day. But if he's a she, then she's the most convincing actress I've ever encountered. Therefore, let me pronounce my verdict. Robin Newman is without a question a man. Uh, <laughs> you are now truly Justice Dono's equal in one area. You are just as equally insane. Never in the history of this planet has there been a finer specimen of the masculine spirit. 
Oh, who, who, who do you think would be the manliest Ace Attorney character? Oh, we'll get to that in a second. If you guys are done talking about me, I'm, I'm... Huh? 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 Ah, the brace, it's... That's a girl! Um, I I nearly made a comment that maybe the brace was concealing her huge naturals, but I thought that would be too crass. Oh, so those aren't really large, uh, huge naturals. They're just uh, the normal naturals. Uh, she's eighteen, right? Yeah, she is. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, anywho, <clears throat> who do you suppose the manliest Ace Attorney character is? Who reeks of masculinity? Ooh, I almost want to say Godot, but no, he was kind of freaky about women. Too cleany. Someone who's more secure in themselves. Hmm. Maybe Eddie Fender. I don't know. Miss Sykes? No, allow me to call you Athena. I wanted to keep this a secret at all costs, but no. Well, no way! Yeah. Surely this must be some kind of jest. That's my line. <laughs> nope, it's for real. I'm a girl, body and soul. If you don't believe me, I'll give you a P-E-E-K. No! Eighteen, yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah, As if! <laughs> what an amazing transformation! Well, all the discord is gone. The image is now complete. Bye bye, Widget. Thank you. I was raised as a boy since I was little, and I studied law just as my parents wanted. Alright, that's uh. That's sad. Don't. Don't force your children to be things. Not in occupation, and especially not in matter of personal identity. Don't do that. But now, this living lie that had me pinned to the ground, it's. Ah! It's been blown to smithereens by you, Athena. Now I can stop pretending I want to be a prosecutor. It's, I'm gonna be an artist. Yay! Order. Order. What a shocking development. He really did turn out to be a she. Oh, why is everyone looking at me like that? Teehee. I feel like a movie star or something. Where'd you get that shoe? Did you have that with you the whole time? Where was it? But no paparazzi, please. I value my privacy. Okay, A Y. Rah! No pics or you'll regret it, man. Am I just imagining things, or is Robin even more hyper now than she was when she was a he? I don't know. Maybe it's because she finally got her troubles off her chest. Literally. This is all well and good, but does he being a she actually change anything? The fact that the witness is actually a girl does change things. Because there is now a piece of evidence that we must reevaluate. Hmm, 
Very well, let's see what the defense has for us now. What piece of evidence must we reconsider now that we know that the witness is a girl? Um... Well, okay, this might be close-minded, but maybe the game wants me to point out that this love triangle no longer works? Yeah, right there. Final act in toward love triangle centered on campus she-devil Juniper Woods. Um... It's like... Yes, this does bring it into question, this reveal, but it doesn't rule it out exactly. They could... ...still be into girls, I don't know. Uh... Yeah, it's probably, it's probably the first, uh, Herald newspaper. Hmm... Uh... Alright, there's also this, the voice of a woman shouting, You're a goner? Hmm. Yeah, I could see either this or this being the correct answer here. Now, on one hand, submitting the tape recorder would posit that Robin Newman may in fact be the murderer. Which is kind of scary and uncouth for a protagonist to do in Ace Attorney. On the other hand, uh, not, not presenting this would support lesbianism, so that's nice. Hmm. I could see it being either thing, but uh, frankly... I'm expecting the game to go with this. I'd love to be pleasantly surprised, though. Take that! Really? Huh. This piece of evidence must be reconsidered because Mr. Newman is really Miss Newman. Hmm, please do explain. Yeah, Athena, explain why ladies can't love ladies. <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. You see, I feel that if you have a sharp eye and an open mind... No, it's closed mind Your argument is closed minded You can discover something completely new in the most obvious of places. Hmm. Yeah, the defense's statement reflects anything but those two admirable traits. Exactly. <laughs> Guess that won't fly. But I know we have some sort of evidence that could be seen differently based on sex. All right. All right. All right. It's this. Take that! This is what I'd like the court to reconsider. Oh, the tape recorder. The one that recorded the threat to your goner. That's right. And we have already established that it's a female voice in the recording. Of all the students who could have moved the body before the mock trial was to start... Our client was the only female if you exclude Miss Scuttlebutt because of her alibi. And that is why the tape recorder made our client the prime suspect. Oh, so then... That's right. The witness just revealed that she's a girl. Therefore, if we are using the voice in this recording as the basis for hurling accusations, this witness must be labeled a suspect too. Oh! Oh no! Wow. Talk about a sudden turn of events. You've done it. You found a hole in one of the prosecution's key pieces of evidence. Yeah, but... Wow, that was a lot of work for a single one. Objection! Not so hasty now. You're forgetting that only one person here was privy to the script. Ergo, Miss Juniper Woods is still the prime suspect. Objection! But Miss Newman hid the fact that she was a girl, both at the crime scene and in court. I'd say that puts her in camp suspicious. Eek! That's not nice, Athena. How can you accuse me of being a killer? I mean, I'm just a weak, innocent little girl. Just thinking about that murder makes me... Whoa. Objection! <laughs> 
Ugh. <laughs> suspicious is as suspicious does. Undoubtedly, the witness does have some sort of connection to this crime. Perhaps our newfound lady is merely feigning ignorance. We can surmise that she lent support to the principal offender, Juniper Woods. By leading Miss Scuttlebutt to the body, that would make her an accessory to the crime. How can you say that? I'm not an accessory to any crime, Mr. Birdman. Objection! The birdman <laughs> In any event, with a witness as an accessory, it explains quite a bit, does it not? Objection! Ah, oh, he made it all make sense somehow. And he'll keep accusing Junie unless we can show someone else knew the script details. But how could someone have gotten their hands on that kind of info? The only way they could have known what was in the script was if they... ...had penned the script? Oh. Huh. A top secret script written by Junie. We only have her word as proof. Oh. Now, I know Juniper is the student council president, but would she have access to school festival funds? That might be beyond me because, well, I'm not really familiar with Japanese culture, especially in high schools. Um... If this script was written by, say, Aristotle Means, that would be really convenient for us. So, let's take this bit by bit. Saw the mock trial. Yeah, we already know this won't work because, well, all this was happening before the mock trial even began. It was uh, set up well beforehand. Heard it from Junie. Well, that just relies on, well, a what if, a hearsay. There's no evidence to possibly back this up. There's no possible way for evidence to back this up, rather. It would just be a convenient excuse, that's all. But if some new person penned the script, that would open up whole new avenues of investigation and cross-examination. I want to believe it's this. I've got it! All anyone has to do is write their own script. In a completely stream of thought, devil may care way. Oh. I'm not even going to ask how such a Frankenstein could re resemble the actual script. No. Oh well, if at first you don't succeed. Oh, really? All right, I guess heard it from Junie. Maybe I overthought it. Sorry, Junie, but you're not going to like this. Our client may have leaked the script's details to someone. What the devil? <laughs> and I know I shouldn't have, but I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Oh. Well, this is what I get for playing this like a week after that. <laughs> Alright. Miss Woods did not want Hugh O'Connor to win the mock trial. That's why I believe she leaked the details to the witness, Robin Newman. I get it. If Robin won, Hugh wouldn't be able to confess to Juniper. Right. Juni was probably trying to keep their friendship from becoming awkward. No, oh, Sniffle. How could you, Thena? What a bunch of bull! I... I... 
I never heard a word about the script from Juniper. Never, ever. Objection. You sure? Can you look me in the eye and swear you didn't? B A D Athena. You don't have any evidence. <laughs> oh. Actually, we might have just the thing. Really? Yeah, one of Robin's lines I read when we were re reenacting the mock trial. Here's a shot of the crime scene. Ironically, it was Professor Court who posed as the corpse. Air Forehead, how did the mock trial participants react to this photo? Mr. Newman was surprised by what Professor Court was wearing. The color. That's right. Huh. Robin said, oh, the green sweatsuit. S-U-R-E. I might have said that. But, so what? Well, think of it this way, Athena. Yeah. Uh, which way, exactly? If I told you that I'd be wearing a blue suit today, but then showed up wearing what I've got on now, what would you say? Um, oh, the red suit. Oh, I think I've got it. Your Honor, we have evidence proving that Miss Newman knew the contents of the script. The defense moves to present said evidence to the court. Very well, Miss Sykes, present away. I was just looking at it. Page 4. Sweatsuit. Victim's outfit will be a red one from the prosecutor course. Here we go. Take that! The mock trial script. Miss Newman, during the mock trial, you were shown a photo of the victim's body. And reportedly, you reacted by saying, Oh, the green sweatsuit. Oh, uh, yes, I said that. What's your point? You seem to have some issue with the green sweatsuit, and I think I know why. The proof is in the script, specifically on the things to prepare page. Sweatsuit, victim's outfit will be a red one from the prosecutor course. Ah. You were surprised because the sweatsuit in the photo was green. But if you didn't know about the script's content, then that shouldn't, shouldn't have surprised you. <laughs> no! I thought we were friends, Athena. How could I have been so blind? <laughs> I like that she said that from the floor. In light of her privileged knowledge, I move to declare Miss Newman a suspect, Your Honor. You what? If knowing the script details makes me a suspect, then there must be others besides me. I mean, someone else could have also seen Professor Court's note. Note? What note? The professor and Juniper were working together to prepare for the mock trial, but only one copy of the script was made to prevent it from being leaked. But that gets kind of inconvenient, right? You're not seriously going to suggest... Oh, but it's the truth. Professor Court did do exactly what you're thinking. She didn't write down any of the proceedings or the truth behind the case, but she did write a note to herself about the props and details about the victim's B-O-D-Y. Did she? Alright, this is Court's planner. Teen report, speak with Hugh O'Connor. Meet with Hugh about that report yesterday, important. Prep for mock trial final confirmation. Meet with Mr. Wright about training seminar. Mock trial begins. There's nothing. Is this really true, Miss Newman? If you don't believe me, send the police over to my house. Tell them to check the pictures on my camera. I thought it might give me an advantage. So I took a picture of the note. You did? Whoa! 
That's how you use a camera, take notes, scuttlebutt. I'd say she's telling the truth. Wait a sec. If there's a note with details about the body, then that means... There are others who could have made the murder look like our client's script. Yes, I believe you're right. <laughs> Apparently, this case isn't as clear-cut as Prosecutor Blackwell would have us believe. This new revelation blasts a big, fat hole in the prosecution's case. Oh! Uh-oh. Bully for you, Missy. But don't think this spells victory. And why not? The battle is still young, and my blade is now fully drawn. Between it and my next witness, your life will be forfeit. So put away your wooden sword. And show me what you are truly capable of if you wish to live. You want it? Don't worry, I'm gonna bring it. Ugh, this guy. I already said I want nothing to do with this trial. How juvenile. It is not a matter of what you want, for you will cooperate, Hugh O'Connor. Prosecutor Blackwell, why have you called this witness? You will recall that the day before the mock trial, in short, the day of the murder, the accused testified that she left her home at around 6 p.m. Yes, my notes here do confirm that fact. Right. Our client wasn't at school at the estimated time of death, so she couldn't be... Objection! Yet that was but a felicitous lie. Or am I mistaken, golden boy? I've no intention of saying anything more. Now, if you'll excuse me... Hold. I am not through with you yet. <laughs> Seems the rogue prosecutor has it out for me. Leave and we just might discuss you know what. Oh. Blackmail. All right. Ugh, oh, no, wait. One little statement and Mr. Cool loses it? What's that all about? I changed my mind. I'll stay and testify. Hmm, are you sure, Mr. O'Connor? <laughs> the word of a genius is as good as gold. Let's get on with this. Q. O'Connor, a senior at Themis Legal Academy, lawyer course. How's that? J just fine. Your testimony then, if you please. You're up against the top of the class now. I'd be careful if I were you. I know Junie would never lie like that. That pompous schoolboy won't know what hit him. Huh. And for the love of God, what is that he's holding? It's bothering me. Around the time of the murder. To get mentally prepared for the mock trial, I meditated at the archery range till 7 p.m. At around 7.15 p.m., I went to the main building before going home. That's when I saw Juniper. Now, hold on. What was the times of your meeting on the 23rd? Shoot, no time specifically. But you did meet with Constance Court. That is suspicious. At around 7.15, I went to the main building before going home. That's when I saw Juniper. We didn't say much as we passed by each other. She seemed her usual self. That's it. Anything else you'd like to ask? That is quite enough. Well done, golden boy. <laughs> the final bell rings at 7 p.m., at which point the campus is a desolate place. Now you will recall the tape recorder. We know the time of the voice recording. It was 7.10 p.m. the day before the mock trial. That was a dark hour of this heinous crime. D do you have any proof of that? 
Oh. Oh, alright, so the recording must have picked that up. As its final bell, the school plays a special broadcast when the clock strikes seven. The female voice on the tape appears ten minutes after that broadcast. The killer waited until the, until the school was empty to spring her devious and deadly trap. Hmm. So, when the witness saw the defendant, that would have been... Indeed, it was five minutes after the voice was captured on tape in the art room. Ergo, we know that the accused was still in the main building, even after the killing. Hmm. So the time of the murder and the time of when the body was moved. Great. Another inconvenient testimony. Miss Sykes, your cross-examination, please. Please restore my health, please. Help. Mercy. Uh-oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, crap. Alright, well... Uh, well, I, I, we won't be able to get through this cross-examination in nine minutes, so... Probably for the best that I end things here. I'm getting really thirsty besides. I need to refill my cup of water. Uh... Well, hey! <laughs> the This series is no stranger to complete transformations, but coming off of uh, Marlon Rhymes' transformation, uh, Newman's was... Particularly subtle. Bravo, nevertheless. Bravo. I'm happy she can be herself now. Uh, maybe... Maybe her parents are in the wings watching and they're gonna see how heartfelt their... their, their daughter is and be like, Alright, maybe we won't raise them as a son anymore. Oh, who am I kidding? Probably not. Uh... <sighs> Well, when it comes to O'Connor here, I definitely feel like the key thing to find a way to bring up will be his meeting with Constance Court that very day, the day that he's talking about right now. Something tells me, though, that it's going to be a quite roundabout journey to get to that point, so I'll try my best not to be over-eager and try and spring the journal ASAP. I want to think things through. I kind of have to, because I only have two chances left. <laughs> but that is a problem for future me. <laughs> I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Dual Destinies. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.